I am spending the night alone in an abandoned cabin in the middle of the woods. Okay, stop. The intro that you just watched is for a video that I thought was lost forever. Let me explain. A little over a year ago, I filmed the first ever video for this channel, and that video wound up never getting published. Why? The first reason is because there was a lot of technical issues with the footage that I captured. I opted to delay the video because of the technical issues, and sometime during that delay, all of the footage that I had captured was lost. But I recently discovered that I actually have one remaining copy of this video. It is the original edit that was exported by our editor. And I've decided that I want to share this video with all of you today. Without further ado, the first ever video that I filmed for my channel, a video that I thought was lost forever, starts now. This is my show, gosh darn. Welcome to a beautiful winter day here in the Pacific Northwest. This is definitely not the first solo trip that I've done, but it is my first time filming something completely solo on YouTube. I just always have the team with me filming, so I'm a little bit nervous about it, but I think that mostly this is gonna be really fun and really relaxing. Really quick, I mentioned that this was an export of the edit. This was never intended to be the final version of the video, so it is a low res export. Just keep that in mind. This is much more camera than I'm used to handling. <laughs> so many people have asked me to do a solo camping video, and now we're gonna do it. Okay, full transparency, it's not exactly an abandoned cabin. It's an old fire guard station that used to belong to the Forest Service and now have been converted into these rental cabins where backpackers or hikers like me can go spend the night. Currently, I am not alone. Rainer dropped me off at the trailhead along with Kyle, one of our awesome videographers. But this is where their journey is ending. I'm gonna say goodbye to Kyle and goodbye to Rainer until tomorrow morning when he's gonna pick me up. And then you all are gonna come with me on this solo camping adventure. Woohoo! Rainer? Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> there you go. I will take this. Okay, this brings us to the first issue with the footage. So if you can see kind of those black specks on the bottom of the screen, that is a scratch or a piece of dust on the sensor of the camera. And basically, if there is anything on that sensor in the body of the camera, that shows up on the image. And normally, you would clean that, and you would clean it really well, and you would double check it, but I didn't realize how bad it was until I got the footage home. Learned my lesson. All right, great, let's go. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> All right, later. Bye. Oh, I really do feel like I'm going off for my first day of kindergarten. Oh, look, I already found some dog poop. Look. It's dog poop. Rock to a solid start. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Have fun filming poop! Here we go! Welcome to my show! We're going solo! Rainer told me to get B-roll and here I am like filming a dead bush. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Look at this beautiful view. So, I've got about a quarter mile, and I'm actually gonna stop up here and take off my snowshoes. This trail is so packed down from the snowmobiles that they're totally unnecessary. Let's do it. Oh. All right. Whew. Yeah, it's me better. I have absolutely no idea how to properly strap snowshoes to a backpack. <laughs> Blue skies! Unheard of. The cabin where I'm staying tonight is called the Tianaway Guard Station. In the summertime, you can actually drive all the way to the cabin, but here in the winter, you have to walk or snowshoe or snowmobile into it. It was actually originally constructed by some guy in 1950, and then when he passed away, it was given over to the Forest Service. They briefly used it as a fire lookout station, and now it is a cabin that you can rent. There's no water, there's no electricity, but they do provide some amenities such as like a stove, a toilet. It's kind of like a step up camping experience. Beautiful. 
This trail is now going along the Stanley River and it's just a beautiful sound. There is a part of it that feels a little bit sad that the crew's not here. There's something so nice about doing all these trips with them. I like, wish they could be here to see this. Oh my God. Dude, my arm is already so sore from holding this camera. It's so much respect for our video team. It was hard. A little snow bridge. See it? Huh. Well. So I just got to a junction in the trail. I'm pretty sure I stayed to the left because I don't remember seeing a turn on the map, but if I don't see it in a mile, then I'll come back and I'll go that way. Yeah, I'm like 90% certain, maybe 70. This is what happens every single time I go solo backpacking. And I'm like, I can't do this. What did I forget? What did I mess up? Am I gonna be able to do this by myself? Am I gonna be scared? Am I gonna love it? Like, <laughs> it's like I'm with other people. I'm like 100% confident. Brains are tricky, y'all. <laughs> All right, I see a sign up ahead. Oh, in a bathroom. We are here. Oh my gosh. Wow, it's so little. It's cute. Take a look. A little creepy looking. So I hope it's cozier on the inside. Maybe I'd prefer a tent. All right, let's get inside. Oh, oh cool. Oh my gosh, wow, check this out. All right, welcome home for the night. This is actually a lot nicer than I was expecting. Yay, we made it. I am going to go ahead and get my stuff set up in the cabin here. Okay. Bed. It's a beautiful view of the bathroom. I really like to figure out how to use the wood burning stove because it's quite cold in here and it's only gonna get colder tonight. So we're gonna try and split some wood and um, get a fire going. Okay, so right about now in the footage is when the focus problems happen with the camera. The camera was auto focusing on the wall behind me, not actually on me. So you'll see as we go forward, there are more and more moments where I'm out of focus and something behind me is in focus. Oh, shit. there's a bunch of split firewood already. Is that enough? That'd be enough. Let's even get the fire started. And then we'll see if we need to put more firewood. So yeah, there goes a whole lot of nothing. I'm trying to find my lighter. Now I brought you. Can't trick me. We need kindling. Looks like we're gonna go split some firewood after all. Let's go check it out. There's a tiny murder shed. We have firewood. I think all I need is kindling. I'm just gonna try and gather some of this stuff up. Maybe split that log too. Ooh, I'm nervous. This next part with me splitting firewood is, is a little painful to watch because I look so clueless. But we're okay with that, right? We're all just, we're all learning together. And uh, I don't make a lot of fires in the woods. <laughs> You'll see why. I'm done. I, I hate this. Well, that was a fail. But I gathered up some small pieces. I think that's gonna help me start a fire. Let's head back to the cabin. Just cannot get it to light. <sighs> Having a fire would be really nice. Boo. It's getting cold though. It's getting cold. Well, I could not get the fire started. So to console myself, we are going to make some snow ice cream. I've actually never done this before. I tried to find the cleanest snow I could find. And then here I have one of those like kids lunchbox size vanilla almond milks. We don't know how much to add, so I guess we'll just find out. Ooh, that's kind of cool. <gasps> okay. Vanilla snow cream. Because I'm very fancy. I brought sprinkles. Boom. <laughs> Ta-da.
I spoke, I, wow, burr. Do not recommend unless you get a fire started. All right, back inside. Okay, so fire update. I went and got some small twigs for kindling. I'm hoping that this makes this a little easier. If you don't know this about me, starting fires is not something I'm good at. I'm not like a big fan of campfires. I've never started a fire in a wood burning fireplace. It's also so cold that I'm draining the batteries on this camera super fast. So I'm gonna try and keep it warm and keep it off, but I will check back in with you all if I get this fire going or if I don't. Let's see what we can do. Ba-bow! Fire! As you can see, it is doing very well. I am so glad I was able to get it. I went from hating it to now feeling like my entire purpose in life is this fire and I must protect it at all costs. This camera's heavy. Yay, fire, warming my fingies. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna keep working on it a little bit. You see that? Oh, you really cannot see that at all. <sighs> Yay. <laughs> The sun just set maybe like 20 minutes ago. What I am realizing is that I think I will definitely need to split more firewood. This is everything that the last people left me. I feel like I'll probably go through that pretty quickly. Oh, look at the moon. <gasps> Do you see it? Moon. All right, well, I'm gonna keep this door closed in this cabin and uh, try and keep it warm in here. It's actually quite cozy now that I have a fire. Probably in about an hour, so I'll make some dinner. But mostly I just wanna chill in here, read my book and just like stay warm and cozy. When I first walked into the cabin, I was a little nervous by how like small and kind of creepy it looks like from the outside, but being in here, it's actually really cozy and really lovely. Oh, good, good. So I have here some freshly boiled water, Alpen Air mountain chili. I'm also gonna make some tea. <laughs> tea. Making myself some tea, gonna drink it, gonna go to bed, do, do, do. This is the coziest I've been in a long time. I'm sitting in this cozy chair, my food rehydrating next to me. Got a cup of hot tea, sitting in front of a fire. I brought all this extra stuff on this trip, like I brought lanterns and tea. I brought a book to read because I won't have people around and like people generally make me feel more comfortable, you know? And I feel like that's a really good reminder for me that like anytime I am out backpacking, not just by myself, I should probably be bringing some things that are just for me. So that's my message to all of you. Even if you're backpacking in a big group, bring something that's like just yours. It has definitely been at least 10 or 12 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and open my food up and eat some dinner. This is always like the moment of truth, like is it rehydrated? I think yes. Eat, eat. Mmm, that looks pretty good. Mmm, yummy. All right, I'm gonna eat my dinner. Woohoo, in peace, leave me alone, jeez. I'm just kidding, I'm glad you're here. Now here's something that I didn't have back when I filmed this video, and that is sponsors that help support my YouTube channel. But I'm really lucky now to have a number of amazing partners that help me create content. And one of those partners is Element. So quickly, a word from our sponsor. I am at my editor Abby's house right now working on a video and currently I am actually drinking my daily dose of Element electrolytes. If you ever struggle with headaches, muscle cramping, or dehydration when you're outside, then you definitely need to be replenishing your electrolytes. And in my opinion, Element is the most effective and the most delicious electrolyte drink I have ever tried. The flavor that I'm currently drinking is the watermelon salt, but honestly, I think that all of their flavors are amazing. So if you haven't yet tried Element, go to the link below, which is drinkelementy.com slash Miranda goes outside, place an order there, and you will get a sample pack of eight of Element's amazing flavors. As someone who's chronically dehydrated, Element has truthfully been a game changer. I'm gonna get back to editing this video and you're gonna get back to watching our current video. Yum, 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 yum. Mountain chili, yum, yum, yum. Okay, so I snuck out to do my last pee of the night and it is an absolutely stunning night out there. The sky is almost completely clear, but you can see the moon and just like one star. It's just so beautiful. I think my favorite part about this night so far has actually been sitting in front of that fire, wrapped in a blanket, drinking some tea and reading my book. <laughs> It was just like such a perfect way to completely relax and allow my brain to just finally be at rest. And that feels great. I'm proud of myself for getting the fire started. I can barely see my breath anymore. 
this whole cabin just has this scent of like wood and smoke and the metal from the stove. This very rich, deep scent to it. And I'm really looking forward to falling asleep in this place. Okay, I really quickly just wanna appreciate how cozy of a setup I have here in my little bed. Here's my sleeping bag. I have two little lanterns, my reservoir tube coming over from the top of the bunk bed. And then here we have a blanket. Look at this. And of course, the fire. This is the book that I'm reading. It is called Pilgrim at Tinker Creek. It is by Annie Dillard. Um, and she's writing about living in the Blue Ridge Mountain Valley in Virginia. I'm really missing my crew. Gosh, I really hope that I got everything necessary for this video today. If this ends up being just complete trash, then you will know the truth. The truth is that without my crew, I am completely lost. I'm gonna go the heck to bed and I'll see y'all in the morning. Good night. <laughs>Good morning! <laughs> it is like 7.30. Man, I slept for like almost 12 hours. I was very cozy in this little sleeping bag, very warm. Even though my fire went out around like midnight. Let's get this day going, buddies! I keep like reaching for a light switch. <laughs> Silly girl. So I stepped outside here. It's actually only 6.30 in the morning, not 7.30, so the sun's not quite up yet. But I stepped outside. Did you hear that? Guessing wolves? Amazing. <laughs> All right, let's wander. Oh, sun's coming up. All right, I'm gonna put you down next to me and we're gonna watch the sun go up together. Beautiful creek. The sun just peeking up over top there. All right, coffee time. Let's go make some coffee. I'm ready to drink coffee. Ugh. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Okay. I'm actually gonna try and braid my hair while that boils. My hair is so cold. Ah, and our water's boiling. Wow, that was perfect timing. Coffee, mushroom powder. Mushroom powder? What did I just put in my coffee? And then a wee bit of almond milk. Coffee. Mm. Uh, let's do a little oatmeal taste test. I have not yet had this oatmeal. This is from a brand called Delicioats. They have like a cherry chocolate one and a raspberry one that's really good, but this is apple cinnamon. Open oh, sesame. Mando's hungry. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Oh no, I'm stupid. I was pulling on the wrong thing. Tell no one. Don't leave this in the video. Mmm, this looks good. Mmm. Chia seeds, hemp seeds, apples, cinnamon, oats, peanut flour. Delicious oats is now one of our favorite breakfasts. It's so funny to look back at this and be like, oh my God. That's right, this is the first time I ever tried it. This is the best apple cinnamon oatmeal I've ever had. I have about two hours until Rainer's coming to pick me up. I'm not in any rush to leave. <laughs> it's so beautiful here. The one thing I was fairly nervous about last night was sleeping in a house alone in the middle of the woods versus sleeping in like a tent with my crew or even a tent at a campground where there's lots of other people, you know? But it actually didn't feel scary at all. I just felt like I was at home. So many people have asked me about tips for solo backpacking. And I think the biggest tip that I often share with people is to pick an easy trail, something that's like really short, 
maybe even a trail that you've day hiked before. If you can pick something that you are already familiar with the terrain, you're already familiar with the area, then you can really get the experience of spending the night solo, decide if it's something that you'd like, and then from there pick a much longer, harder trip. But I think another option is to pick something like this. So if something goes wrong, you have shelter, you have coverage. And truly, if I can start a fire, you can start a fire because I'm terrible at it and I managed to get something like burning pretty hot last night. <laughs> So yesterday, my wood chopping attempt was an absolute failure, but I was lucky enough because some people had left some wood for me. And so I thought, what better way to spend my last hour here than attempting to chop wood again? Dun, dun, dun. A reaping wood woodshed in the woods. Wow. This is impossible. This is so hard. Oh my gosh. I've like barely made a dent. Okay, we're gonna keep going. It's freaking hard. Great. Perfect. I'm gonna try a smaller piece. We have wood number two. This piece looks much kinder. Damn. Is there a wedge? All right, this piece seems splittable. Oh, okay. Oh. Now let's see if we can get this thing in there. Okay. Oops, just split already. Ow. This is a bad idea. We're going back to the axe. Come on, you got this. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're so close. exactly one piece of firewood. Look at this bad boy. I don't want to be cocky. I feel like I'm getting pretty good at this. I'm trying to do one more. Oh! <laughs> Look at that! I'm gonna show you the pile I've chopped. It's small, but it is mine. Ta-da! Wow, I feel extremely accomplished. I know this probably seems like a really small thing to some of you, but normally when I'm starting a campfire, I'm doing it with like fire starter. And I've never chopped logs before. So first for everything, y'all. I'm gonna get my stuff ready to go and um, finish up my lumberjack mode. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful morning. This was a really awesome way to rest and recharge. I feel so good. I'm actually kind of sad to leave. Eating oatmeal and reading a book. This is exactly what I wanted from this morning. I'm going to pack up my bag and check out of this cabin. Wow, so large. I believe I'm pretty much packed up. It's about 10.30 now, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and start walking out of here and see if I can bump into Rainer. Oh, wait a second. Oh my gosh! Oh, look who it is! Wow! Come here, buddy! Come here! Hi! Hello! Look at the dog! Good morning! <laughs> hey. oh, oh, greeted by my bestie. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Hi, Thunder. I'm gonna grab my bag and hike out of here. Very heavy backpack. In case you can't tell, this was before I discovered garage grown gear and learned about ultralight gear options. My pack weight has gotten way lighter in the 14 or so months since I filmed this video. Staying in this cabin was such an awesome way to get to do a solo backpacking trip, but have the comfort of staying in an actual like shelter instead of just a tent. So if you are considering solo backpacking, but you're nervous about the experience of spending a night in a tent by yourself, see if you can find a cabin like this in your area or another type of shelter where you can rent it, hike in and really get the chance to do a solo trip without all of the concerns of spending the night alone in a tent. It was really fun for me to film this on my own, but I definitely missed my crew. So 
if you all want to see me film more solo videos, please let me know in the comments below. But I'm also very much looking forward to having my crew back on my next couple adventures. If you have any of your own tips for solo trips or if you have recommendations for places like the Tianway Cabin to stay in your area, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you outside. Bye! And that is the first ever video that I filmed for my YouTube channel that I thought I would never get to share with all of you. I keep calling this video a failure, but I've actually failed so many times on this channel since starting it. And I have failed on so many different backpacking trips and hikes. I have bailed on adventures. I have not gotten to places that I wanted to go to. I have forgotten essential items and Failure is not necessarily a bad thing. As long as it's not a life or a death situation or you're not putting yourself or other people in danger, to fail is really just a part of the learning process. And personally, it's kind of one of my favorite parts of the learning process because if you fail at something, then you know what not to do. And that's kind of cool. <laughs> so if you've watched this whole video and you have some of your own stories of failures that wound up being really formative learning experiences. I would love to hear them in the comments below. And as always, if you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you outside with better cameras and everything in focus. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so you thought that I was gonna meet you while I was hiking. Yeah. And I thought that you were gonna meet me at the cabin. Yes. And you met me at the cabin. Yes. <laughs> so I was right. I don't know. I, I think that's how it worked out. <laughs> Does it make you right?